I'm Lamore Schaffman here for RCR Wireless at CES 2014, and joining me is Mike Hopkins for Imagination again, and we were so excited because we're going to talk about wearables, which is one of the top topics here at CES, and we have a very interesting selection here. So, Mike, why don't you introduce us a little bit about how did Imagination actually even get into the wearable space? Okay. Well, Imagination as a company is always focused on getting optimum performance with minimum power consumption. And what we've actually found is that our MIPS processor architecture is extremely well suited towards the wearable market. So we've actually seen the MIPS processors being integrated into the chips that have gone into these products that you see here. So what we have is we have a, a number of wearable devices which are all based on the MIPS uh, processor architecture. This is actually coming through from a company called Ingenic. So on each of these devices, what they're doing is they're actually running a number of different operating systems. So they're full Android-based watches. Um, the capabilities gives you the opportunity to actually sort of uh, build these up. Um, you can run any sort of Android app on these. So what we've actually done with these is we've actually sort of taken maybe the Pure Connect app, integrated onto the watch, connected it to a Wi-Fi, so we can create a single watch that will control your whole sound system around your entire home from a watch. Wow, so wait, wait. So you're taking advantage of the power that your MIPS processors have and you're putting in this something tiny here and then they're able to run an entire operating system on it as if it were my tablet or my larger mobile phone or something like that but now it's the, the form factor of a watch you're basically telling me. Exactly, it's all about having the performance to run the high level operating system and give the user experience but again the power consumption is small enough that we can actually integrate that into a watch. Now at the moment the watches that you find today coming through into the market have to be recharged maybe every day or so. But we're actually working with other partners like INEDA who are developing specific system on chips for wearable devices. So we expect by the end of this year you will have wearable devices that will actually have a recharge rate of 30 days. So you can actually go from a one or two day recharge to 30 days. And so what kind of other cool applications are you finding that are being used on this that are being tested out? But what we can do is, as you look at the next generation of chips, they have our communications IP, they have our video IP, our graphics IP, and multiple MIPS cores. So we have microcontrollers connected to sensors, so all of the sensor capabilities are in there. So if I want to turn my watch off, I can just shake my wrist. Um, or if I look at the time, it will detect when I lift my hand up, and then it will turn the watch on. Um, it also means with the video IP in there, I can actually watch videos on my watch. Um, and I can also use that for communication. So if I want to make a video call from my watch, I can actually do that. We can already do voice with today's watches. You can actually then integrate and have video communications from your watch in the future. This is very exciting. And when are they going to be starting to launch in the marketplace? Uh, well, these watches are available today, so all of these products from people like Geekwatch and also uh, Z-Watch as well, um, we've got uh, Tamoon as well, some of the Chinese manufacturers actually have these products available today. And then we'll see the next generation coming through potentially towards the end of this year. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mike. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.